Nutrition is important for all living things. If you miss some minor chemical in your diet, well, bad things will happen. Same for cats and dogs and for fish and coral. But we don't really know all that much about the nutritional needs of our fish, much less our corals. Instead, we just try to feed a mix of nutritionally complete food. Things like whole frozen foods, or high quality pellets, or human grade nori. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Men, and this video is all about nutrition. In particular, for Acropora corals that we keep in our reef tanks. I found a really neat paper from Aquaculture, it was published back in 2019, titled Elucidating an Optimal Diet for Captive Acropora Corals. And it's all about this topic, so let's dive in. Now, I've been thinking a lot about food with my Avanci Antheas. They're very touchy fish, and it's important to ensure that they get enough food throughout the day. As I mentioned in my tank update video, I've been feeding them just a random assortment of frozen foods several times a day. And I've also been trying to introduce them to pellets with some limited success. At this point, I've seen at least a few of my Antheas eating pellets now, so that's encouraging. Another thing that I am trying with them is freeze-dried food. Freeze-dried foods for our fish and corals are nutritionally complete, just like whole frozen shrimp would be. But they've been freeze-dried and so they're shelf-stable, and they also pollute the water a little bit less than frozen food would. The issue is, of course, they're super dry, and they just float right over your overflow and just into your filter socks, and that's not where your food needs to be. Now, Avasta Marine has a really neat solution to that problem that I discovered with their auto feeder. And it's really neat to see what companies are doing with 3D printing these days. For example, my Great White Skimmer has a 3D printed vloot, and the Avasta Marine auto feeder is almost entirely 3D printed. It includes a little tube that actually has a little sitchy pump in it, and that circulates the food until it has soaked up enough water to just stay neutrally buoyant in the water column. It does seem to work pretty well, and it's nice to be able to give a constant stream of just small amounts of food all throughout the day to the Antheas. They do seem to have taken to that freeze-dried food pretty quickly with this feeder in particular, so that's encouraging. Now, I see a lot of people say that fish poop is enough for their corals. I don't disagree, but just existing is very different from thriving. In tests from 2015, feeding Acropora corals proved to be incredibly beneficial to them. They grew tissue faster, they grew their skeleton faster, it increased the rate of their photosynthesis, they overall contained more chlorophyll, and they had higher concentrations of lipids and proteins in their tissues. Feeding your coral is scientifically proven to make them healthier. The trick is what to feed them. Now, photosynthesis only goes so far. It can't provide necessary compounds like nitrogen and phosphorus, which are required for the growth of the coral. It can't provide lipids and proteins and a lot of the other compounds like that which are necessary to produce new tissue. In fact, somewhere between about 40 and 95% of the energy requirements of an acropora are satisfied by the photosynthesis that takes place in the coral's symbiotic dinoflagellate algae. At the same time, Acropora are very opportunistic and incredibly skilled at making use of whatever they can capture. On wild reefs, coral fill the roles of carnivores, herbivores, deutrivores, and they're also consumers of just dissolved nutrients, as you know. Are you offering all of those options to your corals? Now, for sure, corals use nutrients from the water. Studies from as far back as the 1980s have shown that captive Acropora are able to get up to about 30% of their daily nitrogen requirement simply by absorbing it from the water that they're living in. Similarly, slightly elevated water levels of dissolved nitrogen and phosphate increased Acropora growth and the rate of their photosynthesis. Now, Lucky for us, those two compounds are almost always slightly elevated in our reef tanks, simply because they're so common in the foods that we feed our fish. The traditionally best option for feeding our coral is raw, unfiltered seawater, not something that most of us can provide. As a natural mix of just all sorts of things, it can provide a variety of organism, plants, and otherwise in a range of sizes that's suitable for most any coral. It's really too bad that that's not a feasible option for most of us in the hobby, because raw seawater is really a great 
solution. But we have to stick to commercial food preparations instead, or things that we can grow ourselves in our home. One of the most common things in natural seawater is phytoplankton. We know this because we can find lots of chlorophyll alpha in the water. Ocean water is often visibly green, which leads us to wonder, do Acropora use this as food? We've found other types of coral do use phytoplankton. Acropora also have tiny little polyps, as you know. It makes it hard for them to catch food that might be able to swim away. A study in 1999 showed that Acropora do consume the generally titled suspended particulate matter, of which phytoplankton is for sure a component. Just like the surfaces in our reef tanks, in the ocean everything, including those living single-celled things, quickly become covered in a biofilm. For corals, this adds extra nutritional value to the things that they're consuming. While nitrogen and phosphate are important, so too are compounds like fatty acids. Fatty acids provide energy for things like coral growth and reproduction, and a whole bunch of essential life processes that generally just go unseen in our reef tanks. There are different kinds of fatty acid, though. It's a whole group of compounds, after all. One of the more interesting kinds of them is called the long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acid. And these have been shown to help corals in both dealing with and recovering from stress. Now, you might think that your tank is a peaceful place, but imagine what it's like for a coral to be fragged or shipped or even just brought home from a store. Now, I'm sure that all of those things are very stressful for our corals in one way or another. Some of the species of dinoflagellates that live in our coral can actually create these long-chain fatty acids. So even without them being present in the coral's diet, they can, if the constituent parts are available to them, be created by the symbiotic algae that's living in the coral's tissue. The team from the paper studied three different species of commonly kept Acropora. Acropora lorpes, Acropora millipora, and Acropora tenius. They looked at several different kinds of food, specifically trying to see how long chain fatty acids might have an impact. All the corals were fed continuously, both day and night, since it is known that many corals are more active at night when their predators are sleeping. As controls, the team used both corals fed with unfiltered seawater and some that were not fed at all and kept in ultra-filtered seawater. I think for better or worse, many of our tanks fall into that latter group of corals, those that are not fed at all. They prepared the trial foods daily and fed them using a peristaltic pump at a rate of 2.8 milliliters per minute, day and night. They kept those mixed foods refrigerated throughout the experiment to prevent spoiling. Pretty obvious. The only exception to that was the diets that they made using live ingredients, which were kept at room temperature and under lights if necessary. After 90 days, the experiment concluded they didn't lose any coral, and the Acropora frags were sampled to find their weight, their lipid content, where the fatty acids might be in them, the protein content, and of course, just their overall volume to find the growth rate. Now, the best overall growth rate was from feeding something called Isochrysis galbana. And that's just a single-celled phytoplankton, and it's really easy to culture at home if you would like to try to grow it yourself. That food was fed at a rate of 2,800 cells per minute into their test tanks, day and night. And looking at the lipid or protein content, there were some species differences, though, if you care about things other than pure growth rate. The other live food trial, there were only two, newly hatched artema, that's just brine shrimp, did work, but corals fed the phytoplankton grew more than twice as much as those fed with brine shrimp. The phytoplankton tanks actually surpassed even raw seawater in growth. Although that could be because the algal density was higher in the isocrisis tank versus the raw seawater tank. It's really interesting that there were differences per species. You know, we think that for the most part, our Acropora, well, they're all the same, right? But in fact, it seems like some of them, Acropora millipora in this case, um, isn't as good, or they are not as good at, at digesting food versus some other species. I don't think any of you keep species-specific tanks of corals, but something to keep in mind, it's not completely a one-size-fits-all approach to feeding Acropora. You should feed a variety of things. When the corals were fed a food with a high dietary lipid content, they actually grew less. It's theorized that high levels of lipids might reduce the efficacy of the coral's digestion. 
Lipids are also much more energy dense, which might just lead to the corals eating less of them overall, which of course then leads to less protein and all the other compounds that they'd get from food. You can pretty easily find culture kits for Isochrysis galbana online. Really, all you need is a container, a starter culture from somewhere, a light, maybe even a window, and the right media to grow it in. And then you can feed your corals from your own fresh cultures at home. I looked around, I saw some vendors claiming that corals fed with this stuff are more brightly colored, although I didn't see that mentioned in the paper. This just could be marketing. I hope you enjoyed the content. You can check out the paper down below. It's not open access, but it's a great read if you can get it. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I will see you next time. Till then, stay safe and be kind to each other. Bye.